we're going to replace these switches with some waterproof switches. Had a couple issues with these switches. One, the you see they have little lights on the switch. Those lights get so hot that it literally burns your hand when you touch them. Number two, you see I did a very rush job on these. I just drilled holes and put them in, not even lined up in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so this video is going to be several fold. One, we're going to pull those switches. Two, we're going to patch the holes there. Three, we're going to repaint it. Four, we're going to take our time and put in some good high quality waterproof switches and we're going to line them up straight across so that they at least look a little more decent. And lastly, we're going to add some more switches because I'm going to add a lot more light to this. Right now I've got, basically it came with headlights and uh, for lack of a better term we'll call it a street legal package, you know, working brake lights and tail lights and headlights. Um, but I added kind of a interior dome light and a uh, spotlight on the front. But I want to go ahead and add some side lights and uh, maybe some back lights and probably leave myself some room for expansion if I want to add anything else later. At one point I had uh, lights in the little glove boxes and uh, those not being waterproof got ruined pretty quickly so I took those out. I also have backup lights on here so when you put it in reverse the lights come on I always thought it was annoying having the whistle at you or whatever when it was in reverse. But they don't seem to be enough light when you're backing up to actually see, so I may uh, do something there. This is what I'm talking about with the reverse lights. When you put it in reverse, those come on. And like I said, they're enough to kind of see a little bit but certainly not enough to illuminate the rear of the vehicle whenever you're backing up. As part of that setup I added a light there on the dash so when it's in reverse that lights up. Like I said instead of having it beep at you which is just it's annoying. So first thing I'm going to do I'm going to remove the seat. It's actually a very simple process you just lift it up and pick up the seat and it'll come right out. You see there's hinge there and there that it'll slide out of. It is a two-handed job so I'm going to put the camera down. Removing the switches is probably the easiest part. You just push through from behind. Got them insulated so they won't short out. You have your power source, your ground, and then your output. Both the same type of switch. To fill the hole, I'm just going to use some Bondo. It's basically an epoxy that forms a hard plastic. So you mix that with the hardener, spread it on, and it dries fairly quickly. So you got to mix just what you're going to need to work with, or you'll waste a bunch. Behind the holes, I'm just going to put some painter's tape. That'll give it a nice surface for the Bondo to stick to once the Bondo is in those holes. See they're fairly small holes. Uh, then I'll sand it down and make it as smooth as possible. Just mixing up the uh, Bondo in here since I'm not a body shop. I don't 
use a whole lot of this, so it's been sitting for a while now. It's kind of separated a little bit. mix these thoroughly kind of a pinkish color to it. Bondo's hardened now. I'm going to knock it down first with the 100 grit sandpaper to get all of this junk off and then I'm going to go over it with the 240 probably wet sand and then see how it feels after that. next step is optional, but I definitely think it gives it a smoother finish when you're done, you know, after you've painted and everything. If I don't do this step, you'll see these circles. So just glazing and spot putty. I'm going to clean it with some TSP. Just make sure there's nothing on here, but it's going to make this not adhere. This is dry and I'm going to wet sand it with some 600 grit just to get it smooth and uh, hopefully ready to prime and then paint. It's not perfect. Uh, there's probably no way for me to get it perfect. I'm, like I said, I'm not an experienced body shop person. Uh, but, you know, if this was a show Corvette or something, obviously I wouldn't be doing this. But since this is on a golf cart underneath the seat where you're not going to see it, it's probably smooth enough for what I'm wanting to accomplish here. So I'm going to get this dry clean it with the TSP, mask off a certain area here and then just hit this with a little bit of primer, sand it and then hit a wider area with paint. I'm going to use the same paint that I used before on here so hopefully it will blend pretty well. I really don't want to have to go through removing all these pieces and everything and painting the whole panel. I just try to just paint this area a little bit so we'll see how that turns out.
Okay, it's ready for its first coat of primer. I shook the can for 30 seconds off camera. So you have to watch that. You can see I've just laid down some old towels to cover stuff that I don't want to get paint on. And then I've taped off the areas that are likely to get hit no matter what I try to do. So I'm just going to hit it with a couple light coats, let them dry for a couple minutes in between. It's about 75 degrees out here right now. Feels kind of low humidity, so this ought to dry pretty well. As the primer starts to dry, you'll start to see what areas are going to show when you're done painting. Obviously when you paint, even more areas will likely show if there's any kind of flaw at all. Like I can see a little bit of an outline there and there. Like I said, if this was some sort of show vehicle, I wouldn't even be doing this painting. But this is going to be underneath the seat in a golf cart that we basically use for fun. So. I'm not too worried about this being perfect. I'm going to obviously try to get that as good as I can without spending a whole lot of time. I could possibly hit this with some more of that filler and just try to get it smooth. Like I said, I'm probably not worried about it. I'm going to be drilling back through here and putting in more switches. Some of these spots may not even show. I may be drilling through them. So it's hard to say, but like I said, when you watch it dry you'll see, I don't know if you can tell on the camera but to the naked eye you can see a little bit of a outline of the circle there and there and obviously when that's painted it will really show so this kind of as you're doing your priming it kind of gives you an opportunity to preview things that you might need to go back over so the, the more important the paint job is to you the, the more time you want to spend getting this perfectly smooth because once you paint it every little minor flaw will show. I'm gonna let this dry. I'm probably not gonna hit it with any more primer. Uh, like I said for the goal of this is not to have a perfect show car paint job. It's just to cover up some holes that I rushedly drilled in here without planning. This dries. I'm gonna hit it with the thousand grit and see if that's enough. I may have to go with the 600 if the thousand doesn't do it, but um, so you want to get this to where you basically feel no imperfections. And uh, so I'm going to start with the thousand and see if that's enough. I may have to go down to 600 to cut it a little more. Once it's smooth, and I'll hit it with a couple of really light coats of paint and sort of feather out the paint as I go and then a little bit thicker and a little bit thicker and then I'll see what it looks like when it's dry I may have to do some sanding or I may have to go all the way to the edges with the paint which I'm hoping to avoid I'm hoping I can just hit it in this area and, and blend it I've shaken the paint 30 seconds off camera. Uh, this paint seems to do a pretty good job of covering on plastic type surfaces like this. I'm going to spray a little test spray on the cardboard here. Give it a real light first coat, let it dry for a couple minutes, a couple more light coats like that every couple minutes, and slowly we will get 
heavier coats until it's looking like it's covered and blended. If it doesn't blend real well, I got a couple options. One that would be to obviously paint the rest of the way down. Two would be to try to feather it with the 2000 grit sandpaper and work up to about a 5000 grit sandpaper and then uh, polish or wax it as needed. Definitely doing small, thin, light coats multiple times definitely gives a better job than trying to spray one thick coat all at once. So this is what it looks like. Like I said, being that it's under the seat in the golf cart, I wasn't quite as worried about it as I would be if it was put, in, put on a show car or something. So now I've got a base here to start over again. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to Make sure that I measure everything, get the switches lined up in a straight line so that everything will look, you know, factory and professional instead of just drilling a hole and putting a switch in and drilling another hole and putting a switch in like it was before.